All right, well, welcome back to uh, Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and this special little vehicle is provided to you by Carry Imports. So once again, I am back here at this dealership to do another review for you guys, uh, this time on a 2011 Porsche Panamera base model, but regardless, it is still a Panamera. So you can find all the information to the dealership down in the uh, description box below, where I always keep their information. So with that, let's just... Uh, get right into this little review so this vehicle um, not quite a hundred thousand miles 94,791 whatever it doesn't matter I mean, no I don't have all the service records and all that or whatever you can just look up the car facts for it uh, let's look it up on their website anyway what I'm mainly here to see is how this vehicle is aged after nearly a decade and after nearly a hundred thousand miles how has this thing been holding up because I've been doing a few reviews now on these 100k mile vehicles and I actually recently did an Audi A7 with the 100k miles on also at this dealership. I was surprised to say that car has held up extremely well. And uh, this Porsche Panamera, right? I actually recently, I don't think it's up yet, but I actually did do a review on a 2013 Boxster S uh, with 42,000 miles on it. So that video should be coming up. So I have driven a, a few of these Porsches and a, a 2016 Cayenne with around 38,000 miles, I believe. So. Certainly, I have driven a couple of these vehicles now, and uh, I do like Porsches. The hype is there for a reason. They do drive extremely well. But this car is, it's not perfect, but I can forgive it for its price and the, for the fact that it's really kind of towards the end of its depreciation curve, I believe, and you can still get a warranty with this vehicle. So I can forgive a lot of the imperfections for that reason, but um, we're going to go through some of those here does need the uh, tire pressure monitoring to be a reset but uh, no matter so this vehicle right the inception of this car you know this is like definitely that first generation of panamera where um you know this is like when it first came out right this is actually the rear wheel drive models not the floor or anything like that it's like straight up a base model and it really does like to hold on to the gears and uh, this thing does utilize a pdk seven speed dual clutch transmission which is supposed to be one of the best in the game and when i drove up the uh, the boxer s that also had the pdk and yeah it's legit it is really a great transmission it utilizes a 3.6 liter v6 and no it's on some vr6 thing that the cayenne uses it's actually the v8 that they use like in the s models they just chopped off two cylinders essentially so it is actually a porsche derived v6 engine because it's based off the V8 and does utilize a direct injection system and all that stuff. So uh, a little bit of an extra maintenance thing you have to keep in mind. And overall, the thing produced about 300 horsepower, 296 pounds feet of torque. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but uh, it's definitely got swift, brisk acceleration. It's fairly effortless for what this is. Weighs about 4,000 pounds. Brakes are really nice good amount of travel in it you know it's um, a very natural progressive brake uh, similar to the boxer actually they do a great job calibrating all the little driver you know centric aspects of it visibility this is actually one of the few cars where visibility even for me uh, I usually don't complain about this but um, it's not perfect in here but you can make it work it's not a big deal you know I got used to it pretty easily but I guess the looks right many people hate the looks of this thing yeah, you know, most of the people that complain about it are people that, let's be honest, can't really afford to get one in the first place. Um, well, you can now because it's used, and uh, many of those people who complain about the looks then are probably going to be looking into getting one of these things now uh, because that's just what people on the internet do, right? Like, they just like to bash things that they can't have. <laughs> I don't have a tendency to do that. You know, I really always wanted a Panamera, but I can never afford one due to the price tag of it. Uh, but this is a great-looking car, in my personal opinion. And why is it great? It's baller because, yeah, those off-centered proportions i guess you can say that's very unique and it stands out because of that like normal people looking at this they go wow that thing looks like a bag of money they don't go and look at it and be like oh that thing's ugly no they say that thing looks like money and it's a porsche and it really does dude it's got nice smooth lines and bulges to it i really enjoyed it almost kind of looks like a whale uh, <laughs> just kind of uh interesting but um I really do like it, but dude, this thing is extremely dynamic. It really does respond to your inputs on a dime. I love the weight of the steering here. And yeah, there's a little, you know, sport mode, I guess, and you turn off the trash control here. It's like smooth power delivery. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, um, it doesn't throw you back into your seat. You feel a little bit of a thrust, but um, mostly it's just like, uh, 
really nice, rings out progressively, and the uh, engine actually has a pretty nice smooth tone to it as well. Uh, one of the advantages that BMW has is they actually have an inline six, not a V6. So those are supposed to be very smooth engines. Well, this V6 is actually extremely smooth, so I do like that. I love the uh, the interior coloring in here. You know, it's always a very lucky thing when you can get this like all beige interior that Porsche um, offers here. I will say though, it has aged kind of iffy, like, um, you know, kind of the nature of like a lighter colored interior. Like it just kind of, it shows all the dirt and stuff like that over the years. So, you know, that's one of the downsides to it. I will say though, driving it along, um, there's definitely like, I don't know what it is, but like, let's see here. Of a wheel spin there that's interesting anyway uh, what i was going to say was <laughs> when i go over some of these bumps like both of the like side view mirrors they tend to rattle i don't know what that is but um you know over these uh bumpy roads though i have to say it is pretty comfortable in here and i do like that it does drive extremely well yeah there's only like minor rattles i get when i go over some of these bumps uh, but as a whole dude Porsche interiors, like Porsches are very solid built vehicles, to be honest with you. It's kind of uh, chucking it in here. Definitely can get sideways on you if um, you definitely tend to push it with uh, the trash control off, but it is so catchable. I mean, that's uh, one of the things when you have the longer wheelbase vehicle. It's about 196 inches long, if I haven't mentioned that, and uh, similar to the Audi A7, actually. I will say this. This is a, a much more dynamic vehicle to the uh, Audi A7, similar to a BMW, but like I think this is even better than the BMW, more so on par with the Jaguar XJ actually in terms of handling. Uh, and uh, we're about to see some of that handling here in a little bit. It's a reasonably quiet car, um, high, masks the, the, the tire noise pretty well. Very agile machine, not a whole lot of body roll for what this is actually. Yeah, I think um, the agility in this is what you would expect out of a Porsche. It really does have tremendous uh, handling characteristics. And even when I drove that 2016 Cayenne, I was really impressed with the way that that thing handled as well. You know, rear wheel drive, save some uh, weight there as well. And uh, being the V6, not the V8, it actually shaves off an extra 60 pounds over the, the, the nose here. So that's good. A little bit more of a balanced vehicle. Usually, though, these hatchback sedans, they tend to not be quite as solid, um, but obviously this is the only sedan that Porsche makes, but it's extremely well done. Obviously, a lot of aluminum being used, proper suspension, double wishbone, and uh, multi-link in the rear, of course. Got all that good stuff going for it. Yeah, it definitely gets sideways for sure. I think this is more than enough for the streets. Very effortless for sure. You just get a a tad bit of weight noise but that's about it but now let's just get into some of this interior stuff here because obviously it's a porsche it drives extremely well up there with the xj jags actually so that is stupendous to be honest with you porsches porsche audis you know vehicles like this compared to like a lexus car it's like the build quality like the tightness of the cabin that's all there right and because this car rides reasonably good it doesn't rattle and shake a whole lot so that's another plus point there you know some of the interior panel stuff it's it's worn down a little bit worse than like that audi a7 i guess like this uh strange like violet blue like you know wood trimming i don't even know what that is to be honest with you but it does look cool but you know like the navigation screen actually like it, it went out like it actually doesn't even work it's actually the first nav screen i've ever tested that it actually just does not work so there it is that there's like a rear interior like trim piece there in the back that uh it's kind of like wobbly back there so you know some quality issues like that there like the audi did not have that issues like that i will say though as a whole the audi did age better than this vehicle uh even though there is that general sense of solidity that you experience with a german car or like a porsche in general all that is here this particular example does have a few faults like that there, but I will say the seats in this thing have aged uh, tremendously well, so that's great. And they're actually extremely comfortable too, so that's very good. It's a non-fatiguing driving experience, so I definitely like that. Like, uh, this is a great daily driver. And it really does do like the jack of all trades thing extremely well. Like I mentioned, the lighter colored interior shows a lot of the defects um, a little bit more than I would like, but it does look cool as a whole. 
I do like how all the climate control stuff is completely separated from the uh, the screen here so that is a great plus there there's pretty much buttons all around for to, to use all this stuff but I will say that um, the uh, the navigation is not ideal to use so I don't really care that as you went out um, I've tested this out in the uh, the Boxster and the Cayenne it's just a little bit fussy a little bit extra a lot of the things in this vehicle that Porsche does is extra actually like the shape of this mirrors and all that it just makes it you could have just made it a more rectangular shape and you could have saw a lot more out of it but whatever it is what it is also this uh <laughs> the window switches here you know it is one touch up and down so i do appreciate that for all four windows no double pane glass or anything like that but it's quiet as a whole but it's like it's raked at this strange angle here it's like an extreme angle <laughs> it's i've never really uh, seen that before but you know it is what it is not a huge fan of the uh, the paddle shifting action here so i wish they would just use like a regular paddle where you have to you know just two regular paddles this you had like push in for up it's just kind of weird uh, i guess you could uh, get used to it but it does snap off the the shifts pretty well the gauge cluster is pretty nice you have this big tachometer in the middle which i always appreciate uh, when porsche does that you have this little helper screen on the side here uh, pretty much the same standard stuff you see in all the porsches that i've reviewed anyway uh, it shows you the little navigation screen on the side so that's pretty cool shows you a lot of the temps and all that for the oil for the coolant so i do like that as well automatic headlights cup holder situation a little bit better in this vehicle than it is in other porsches it still utilizes that you know again very extra with the with the cup holders i don't really like that design at all uh it's very strange i try to be uh, intuitive but it's not really working out too well you do have one big cup holder here and you know the space here in the center console not too too terrible um average i guess and you do have a glove compartment here which has a decent amount of storage space now the rear seats it's it's interesting i know like the porsche boss he's like six foot four or whatever he designed this vehicle or he wanted this vehicle to be designed to where he can actually fit in the rear seats and he does so that's a huge plus point i sat back there uh with my seat sitting at five foot eleven i actually do have it's not a plethora of space but i do fit and the good thing is there's a lot of tow room underneath the front seat so that's good there and the seats are really comfortable in the back same as it is in the front you have like this it's like a four-seater design essentially you have this like you know middle like pillar thing going on here there's no crazy features or buttons or anything like that to mess with no like peasant blockers or anything but you do have some storage space there and you have an armrest and all that good stuff so that's good again like i mentioned there's a trim piece back there that kind of is a little bit loose but not a big deal i guess it's a hatchback so a tremendous amount of space space is not an issue that trunk space and all that good stuff it really makes for it like being the perfect daily i love hatchback vehicles you know i know it's not as solid as like most actual real sedans are like my bmw 440i i know it's not as solid as like a 340i but this is a porsche a lot of aluminum being used it's a nice solid vehicle to drive actually a lot of fun to drive i do think that this actually does drive better than my 440i um it just hasn't aged tremendously well that's the only thing it's okay i mean it's definitely not bad but uh there's definitely a few little things i've noticed more so in here than i did in some of the audi vehicles but again though the swagger of this the prestige of this will never be matched by no audi no bmw none of that stuff this shape it's so iconic like everybody knows it's that big baller porsche sedan you know the the people of the internet you know they're insane they just lash out on things that they can't have but the rest of the public they see you in this you are going to be that douchebag that is going to be hated by everyone because they know that you are a big balling boss and that you have money so that's what this vehicle says about you when you roll around in it i would however highly suggest you taking advantage of carry imports warranty because you know parts on these things can be expensive of course so but still though i think it's worth it you know to get a vehicle like this at this price point at the end of its depreciation curve these things actually do hold their value decently well porsches in general do that not just the 911s and boxers and stuff like that like even the cayennes and the panameras they actually hold value better than like s classes 7 series stuff like that so if you want to take advantage of this vehicle you can um, check out carry imports website i will leave all that stuff down in the description box below but hopefully you found interest with this review hopefully it helped you guys out if you're an owner of this vehicle please let me know your thoughts down below it would definitely help out other people in the market it is definitely one of the more enjoyable big body vehicles to drive and place out on the road so with that thank you again for watching take care and goodbye